In part one, we looked at some of the teaching strategies used at Hyams Park School in North London with their gifted and talented pupils. In this program, we'll hear the views of the pupils themselves and look at some of the wider whole school issues involved in providing for the gifted and talented. The day-to-day -day curriculum planning is the job of the gifted and talented coordinators. What do they do? Well, our brief is to keep the gifted and talented initiative and program high on the agenda of the whole school. And clearly it's to coordinate what's happening across the whole school. About five years ago, uh, we set up uh, a working party, a gifted and talented working party, and we feel this has been crucial to the success of gifted and talented work within the school. Um, the Gifted and Talented Working Party consists of representatives from every curriculum area. We discuss teaching and learning strategies for our most able students. We ensure that indicators of giftedness in different curriculum areas have been discussed and exist in different department handbooks. Part of their remit is also to keep those issues um, alive, organic and discussed at department meetings. What sort of teacher training do they encourage? Um, the training offered an opportunity for colleagues to discuss what challenge in their particular discipline might look like and really to move away from thinking that factual recall and gaining um, knowledge of content um, was a focus to moving more towards thinking about developing critical and analytical skills and thinking about building in opportunities for children to develop their powers of evaluation. These are teachers who have said, I would like to attend this training, I would like to know more about this. And that's included newly qualified teachers and heads of department. In a sense, it was really summed up for us um, last year when uh, a member of staff who's been here for some considerable years uh, and, and who perhaps has been slightly cynical about uh, initiatives that have happened within school, said to us that he felt that the Gifted and Talented initiative had been the most dynamic and the most influential initiative uh, that he'd experienced in the last few years. And I think that's true. Can somebody tell me? One important teaching strategy is challenging questioning. Does it like represent the solution that's going to conduct it from the positive to the negative? That's right. Can you just tidy it up for me, please? It's the, it's the solution that conducts the... Nick is going to conduct the current. That's right. Another strategy is to set differentiated tasks so the gifted and talented are stretched. What is the effect of the poem of not referring to this woman by name? She doesn't have to feel guilty because it's not a real person if you don't use her by name. This is uh, a top set Year 11 GCSE group and they're working on a poem which is pres prescribed in their anthology for their examination. And when I'm planning on the groups, I will tend to look for the most able in the group, those who can and do move beyond usually what they're particularly asked to do, and I'll tend to give them the more demanding tasks. OK, Karim, so this was a recent... A third approach is to ensure that individuals, like Karim, have the opportunity to pursue their specific talents, in this case, art. Um, well, I started with the Natural Forms project, and I was... Um, researching on skulls and shells and um, different natural forms for okay, so these living are lovely. So these are observational drawings? Yeah, they're from fox skulls and different bits oh, of bone. Wonderful. And then these were bird skulls, um, which uh, gave me ideas for a mask, um, which was the next project. OK. Um, and then the designs for the mask, we did... These are the final ideas for the mask. OK. Um, We've got, um, there's that uh, label picture, you can see what materials I've got to use. And, um, so you're noting them down as you go along, yeah. with, you know, and swapping ideas. And, and then ideas for how I would put things on the mask. And where did you find these pictures from? They're wonderful. Um, they were from a craft fair that I went to. Uh, they were phoenix heads made out of silver and they were bulldog clips. And then, uh, so this was the finished mask and I Fantastic. interpreted the, the hinge on it and um, I sort of included it in with my natural forms by making it a skull. So when you actually finished this mask, did you have time to actually extend your ideas on further? Um, yeah, I took the natural forms project a bit further by doing designs for a canvas um, okay. of an abstract, abstract fox skull. Um, 
This one was more uh, in facets, and this one I used lines like Picasso's Goat Skull. Brilliant. And then okay. um, these designs I used to um, create the final canvas. Um, this is acrylic, and um, it's meant to be sort of a cubist theme. There are a number of opportunities through the Gifted and Talented Scheme that we can enrich, um, obviously, gifted children through. We try to guide the pupils' interests um, outside school as well, so obviously we're, we'll research and find out if there's um, workshops available within the area that that pupil can attend in their own time um, if they are willing to do that. And obviously, you know, that is usually very successful and um, parents are very supportive in those circumstances. The deputy head teacher explains how they identify their gifted and talented pupils in the first place. Right, the, well the process is um, twofold largely. One is looking at the objective data that we've got on the children from the testing that we do. And secondly, which we feel is very important, is the involvement of teachers and their professional judgement, which uh, is, is imp a very important part of it. But coming first to the assessment data, we use uh, testing in year seven based on the National Foundation for Education Research CATS tests and we for the gifted and talented children we look at their scores and a certain score level will qualify them to be on the gifted and talented register. Secondly with the, with the teachers professional judgment we ask teachers opinion whether they think this particular child that's identified from the data is in fact talented or gifted. So that produces what is known, unfortunately, as an A-list. Um, but we then go back to teachers and say, are there others that are not thrown up by this process that are worthy of being on the list? Once they're identified, they're told, their parents are told, their parents are told and the children are told how they've come to be on that list and what we think it might mean for them and what we think it, it could mean for them in the future. So yes, they're actively involved. Uh, we don't try to keep it hidden or secret. Um, those children know, and in fact all children know, that this register exists and certain children have a different programme, in the same way that other children have a special needs programme covering different areas. So no, it's not kept hidden from anybody. How do the pupils feel about being labelled in this way? It's not a negative thing, it's quite a positive thing, I think. It like encourages you to perhaps work hard or keep up your good work or things like that. Well, I, I think it's a good thing as well because like um, you get recognised for like what you're doing in a way. So like you feel like it's in the way of what you're doing is like or it's, it's, you feel like you've achieved something more so than if like, you're not told about it. Yeah, I suppose it's like really quite good to know what your qualities are, so then you can develop them further. And like the gifted and talented program actually gives you the opportunity to you know expand on your boundaries, like the stuff that you learn in school, you can sort of go the extra mile. One of this pupil's special interests is design and technology, where he has the freedom to work on his own projects. I want to be an architect, so that's where I concentrate on this kind of stuff. Uh, it's just a little model for the, like to advertise the 2012 Olympics. I didn't, I didn't want to make everything too obvious, so I made this like uh, sort of kind of stand, like the gold, silver, and metal, bronze. Kind of. We got all the colors here, going in there. And the main focus I was trying to do to get across here is perspective. Perspective, and I think, seems to be going into this circular kind of thing. I think that sometimes when you're being offered so much in, like. Especially if you're gifted and talented in a number of subjects, you don't really know what to do, and sometimes they're contradicting each other when they're saying, do this, do this, do this, and you don't really know how to cope with it all. Um, but it's like all about your personal decision, and they're only trying to give you advice at the end of the day. Obviously, there are times when you do feel that everything's just on top of you, but even people who aren't on the gifted and talented list feel like that sometimes. But it never actually has gone to the level where you feel like, oh, just leave me alone, that kind of stuff. So it's quite, it's all right, like the balance at the moment. I think sometimes people do have certain stereotypes of you. They think you're going to be geeky or whatever. And sometimes, yeah, the pressure does mount up. And I mean, mostly I'd say it's all good, really. But obviously, with anything, you're going to have the downsides. I agree with Lucy, but I think like if you don't care about it, then it shouldn't bother you, really. Une belle voiture. Qu'est-ce que c'est voiture, Zahir? Car. OK, qu'est-ce qu'on peut faire avec la voiture? 
drive. Ok, en français. Conduire. D'accord. Tu peux mettre conduire au futur. Conduire, oui. Ok, qu'est-ce qui se passe ici avec conduire And There's an E, so you need to take, take it out and put in the AI. D'accord, très bien. You're probably going to get a lot of stress and pressure right now in your job. So if you let us deal with it now, then it will be good in the future. So I can't really see any massive disadvantages to being gifted and talented. Really. I agree with that. I mean, it's, it's hard work, right? but it's, it, the, the advantages like, weigh out the disadvantages, so it's all good. Can anybody else think of how her attitude alters in the course of the poem? Lucy? Um, at the beginning, she's like really excited and wants him to get on with it, and she wants to know everything. But as it teachers do teach you differently if you are gifted and talented, but you don't really notice it because you are on top of it. I think if it was special treatment and we were like told how good we were all the time, then we probably would get really big head and everyone would get jealous. It's done in a certain way, which means that we do get like the extra help and like the extension work, but then. Everyone else still gets like a good education too. They push you further in a way, so they they keep encouraging you, and so like they push you past like what you'd expect, and so like you reach your full potential. Why has the school taken on these gifted and talented initiatives so wholeheartedly? I think mainly that as a, a genuinely comprehensive school, there was this feeling uh, that we, as a comprehensive school, needed to make greater efforts with those children that have got. Uh, talents and gifts that hadn't been recognised before, hadn't been built upon, hadn't been extended. So we're looking to extend the experience for those children. And was it easy to introduce these initiatives? It wasn't easy because any new initiative is always going to meet with resistance. Teachers work very hard and the prospect of being presented with yet another initiative, which is going to mean more alterations, um, is quite rightly greeted with a degree of scepticism. Um, but I think that very much the proof has been in the, um, in the pudding, really, that for six years now we have been developing this work and gradually teachers realising that it's not about um, elitism, it's about the philosophy which is that the rising tide raises all ships and that the strategies that we're looking for which will stretch our most able will also be for the benefit of other pupils too. Did they have any reservations or difficulties? Well, the reservations, there, yes, there were some reservations. There were some people, some teachers, who felt that by identifying children in this way that we were actually going to provide, well, give them certain difficulties in dealing with their peers, etc. There were some teachers that felt that perhaps we were concentrating too much on one group of children at the expense of others. And those are dangers that one has to guard against, and we think we have guarded against that, and we're not disadvantaging other children by the extra efforts that are being put in to this particular program. But I would understand entirely schools feeling that, yes, it seems like a very good idea, but there are going to be difficulties. And you have to make a choice whether you want to attempt to do that and overcome those difficulties. There are always difficulties with any new initiative that's ever started. Simply the determination to overcome them is what's really needed. Mm -hmm.